So I was working on this today, uh, baking out some Alpha Stamps in Moto, and I thought, hey, this would be an interesting video. Now, what is an Alpha Stamp? Uh, alpha Stamps are those black and white images that you see that people use to stamp on details in ZBrush or in Substance Painter or any other program that takes a black and white mask. And where it gets complicated sometimes is you want something custom. You, you want your your own alphas to stamp on and not just you know whatever you've you've purchased or found on the internet so we're going to take a look at how to do it in moto there's a couple of steps uh, but it's not that complicated and the results are good so let's take a look so jumping into moto let's say i've got this flowery detail that i've modeled out and i want the ability to stamp this on to stuff you know in the future so we're going to bake in uh, an alpha mask for this now, when I say alpha mask, in terms of what Moto does, we're talking about a depth mask. So to get started, uh, the first step is gonna be uh, with the default Moto scene, I believe this is correct, but I've customized my Moto a lot. So if something I say here doesn't quite line up with your screen, you know, hopefully you can still follow along. So uh, typically you get an alpha output uh, and a final color output. Uh, those are your two render outputs that get added to your scene. You know, when you start up fresh. Uh, we don't need a final color output for this, so we're going to change this. I believe it's, yes, uh, in the basic channels, choose depth instead. Uh, that changes that to a depth output. Now, uh, we're going to come back to this in a bit because there's something we have to change, but first we have to get the camera set up. So the next step we need to do is to set up the camera correctly. Uh, the camera is what it's going to be rendering through when it goes to render to the render outputs. So uh, first thing, uh, hit O or press this button up here on your viewport and make sure that show cameras is checked. So now the camera shows up and we can select it. So uh, once you've got the camera selected, uh, what I like to do is to move it to the world origin. So I just uh, you know, adjust the position values to zero, zero, zero and zero out the rotations as well. So now it's sitting right at the world origin. To get it to look at whatever we're projecting, uh, you have to get it to stare right at the object straight on. So the way I do it you know, is I put my mesh at the world origin facing up on the Y axis. And I give the camera a negative 90 rotation on X and that makes it sit so it's staring straight down at what I'm trying to get the depth uh, mask for. Now to get the best projection, uh, you're also going to want to change your projection type from perspective to orthographic, because I don't want uh, perspective uh, perspective artifacts you know, coming into play and that kind of stuff. It's just a, a straight on projection. And change the angle of view to 90, just because that gives a nice flat uh, projection, basically. Now, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure whether this is necessary or not, but I also turn on the override render resolution and I give it a 2048 by a 2048. That squares out my projection or it might not matter, but you, know, you can play with it on, you know, on your own. And pretty much that's, that's it for the camera for, uh, for now. We'll come back to it in a second. You also want to uh, let's select your render item here in your tree and make sure that it's set up to the same resolution, which it is. Okay. So having those things set up, we're almost ready to bake. Now the trick with the depth output is that it's very frustrating until you understand what it's trying to accomplish. So the way that I do this is I will flip into an orthographic view like left or something and I will drag the camera down till it's just exactly uh, I'm hovering above the geometry um, that I'm trying to capture into the alpha mask because the thing is the entire range of depth values is well well it's going to be whatever we tell it to, uh, tell it to be but the best way to set this up is like this because then I can say, okay, we're 12.6 centimeters above the world origin. So I'll copy that value out 
I'm going to go to the depth output, which is the properties for this right here. And the only thing we have to change in here is we want to hit the remap pixel values button. That exposes this maximum depth box. And in here, you know, uh, it defaults to 10 meters, which is far too large for what we're doing here. So I'll, I'll paste in that Y position on the camera. So now, as far as the depth uh, output is concerned, the entire range from white to black lies within that 12.6 centimeters. And that gives us the, uh, the best kind of render because we get uh, the full range of values out of it. And so honestly, once all that's set up, uh, we hit F9 to render and just see what we got. And we have a nice little black and white uh, flower deco piece that we can use to stamp in other applications. Now it came out kind of small uh, in the viewport and that's because on the camera actor or the camera object I should say uh, I did the field of view of 90. Uh, that's what worked in my prior uh, experiments this morning but you can make it you know whatever value you want so let's try changing it to 30 to, to tighten it up quite a bit and let's see what that looks like. Okay much better, much larger. Uh, this is more, uh, more usable. So I'm going to save this out to a 16 bit PNG. Now it's important to be 16 bit because uh, you want to capture that full range of values you've gotten there. And there's no point in handicapping your mask uh, right up front by making it eight bit. Uh, you might as well work with the highest res stuff you can. So yeah, I'm going to save this out and I will start up ZBrush and we'll take a look at how to use it. And here in ZBrush, I've started it up. I've loaded the quick sphere in here and I've uh, imported our alpha mask. So you see, this is the brush alpha that I baked out you know, in Moto. It's 2048 with a 16 bit depth. And now it's just like, like any other alpha. I can drag it out on the meshes. I can, uh, use radial symmetry to make designs and patterns with it or whatever else I want to do. And that's it. Uh, that's our own custom alpha that we baked out ourselves and have total control over. So I hope you found that helpful and uh, go forth and stamp some shit.